let's talk about should double check for those online can you see the the screen okay I'll leave it up for a few seconds can you actually read what we have in the wiki or do you need me to increase the uh, font size Yeah. Okay. okay, so when we're talking about reverse engineering specifically for malware, um, what, what are we talking about? Why would we want to do that? Why would we want to reverse engineer malware? For, for what purpose? Why are you guys taking the course? <laughs> So you can grab some indicators or detect the malware so you can figure out what files have been uh, copied to disk and, and what, uh, what parts of the system have been altered otherwise. Okay. I heard uh, for detection purposes, for detection on like a network. Because yeah. so uh, all your centrifuges blew up and you want to know who did it to you. Yeah, uh, for for um, forensic purposes. So we just we just heard kind of two um, two sides of a coin. There, there's the before um, something bad happened, detect you know detect it or or detect that something bad is happening, and then there's the oh shit something bad happened. What happened? And you can do uh, reversing of, of malware. You go, something bad happened. Oh, there's malware on the box. Let's reverse the, the malware to try to help figure out what happened on the system. And with that, that's in combination with you know your all the, the network logs that hopefully you have the you know maybe a forensic disk image, maybe host based monitoring. So you have all of this additional information. That can help guide the malware analysis, but at the same time, use the malware analysis to help guide the uh, the, the forensic or the log analysis. Because we live in a world of lots and lots of data, and you don't have time to go through all the data. So you you use these different things to help guide. You know, what do I what do I want to look at? <laughs> Behavior we talk about here. Yeah, different things. Network signatures. You can actually uh, create network <laughs> signatures as well as host space. We just talked about aiding incident response. There's the network analysis part of it. If you have um, things doing doing command and control can uh, potentially use the malware to create a network signature, uh, not just a, um, a network signature based off of something that you saw on the wire, but maybe a little more generic network signature that would detect multiple variations of what you saw on the wire. Um, encryption keys, if the malware is encrypting its command and control protocol, um, it's, if it's using uh, symmetric, then you can get the key, hopefully, out of the malware itself, or figure out where in the packet analysis you need to look for the key. Um, and then, and Alex touched on this a bit, if you're looking at uh, actually removing contamination from the system um, instead of the, the you know, Format re-image, um, then you want to look for the disk modifications registry. Is it accessing the you know any kind of firmware on the system, or is it just embedding itself on on disk and memory? There's also correlating of attacks. 
this is a big thing when you are um, working in on the defense side of malware, um, both from a who, who is who is trying to attack us um, from the you know can we is this somebody that we can actually work with law enforcement to track down and stop through through those means um, as well as just that big data problem of you know I I have too much work to do not enough time in the day slash week slash year is this something I or somebody else has seen before and if so can I leverage the analysis that's all already been done um, that that is definitely a, a big win if you can get to the point where you are able to say we got this in and we have seen this before or the person you know across and two cubicles over has already worked on this so I need to leverage that um, and it seems like a small thing but it is a big thing <laughs> trust me um, and just just some of the different things that you can use for the the correlation um, um, some of the stuff you can get from dynamic analysis. Uh, some of the stuff you get from just taking a look at the, the binary, if you have the, the binary, um, and then some of it you get from reverse engineering. Any questions on why we do reverse engineering of malware? Is there any software that you know of that accepts a, um, a decontamination protocol if, if they believe the machine has been affected? I mean, I, I, I imagine most of them would want to just blast the machine and do a re reinstall. Um. We can talk about that offline. Any folks online have questions so far about what we've talked about? <laughs>